Hi, in this video I'll be talking about loops in MATLAB. Now loops are an important component of controlling the flow of your code and it makes your code be able to repeat certain statements in specific and controllable ways and it's not unique to MATLAB, it is also the main component in many other programming or scripting languages. Simple repetition in MATLAB can be controlled by two types of loops. There's the for loop and there's the while loop. And now we're going to look at the for loop. Now for the for loop, it would execute a statement or a code block a predetermined number of times, which means that you need to specify the number of times to execute the commands. The basic form of a for loop is this, the statement for, and then any variable named index, usually the common symbol used is i, equals to um, the starting index and how much you like to increment from the starting index to the end index and the code block or the command that you like to run this predetermined number of times and n would close the for loop block. Now if the increment is not specified because it's optional then MATLAB would assume that it's 1. Now let's look at an example in MATLAB. You type in the for statement first and then the index and the index can be any variable, any name, the usual variable is i, so I'm going to use i for index, equals to the start, which is usually 1, and I increment it by 1, and the n index is 10. Press enter, and you'll see this expansion symbol to um, close or open the block. Then the statement. So here, for this for loop block, I like to assign values into the matrix x, and uh, the values I like to place in the ind indices of this matrix X. I'm going to call it i equals to 0. That's the value that I like to put into this array of X. Press enter and end the for loop with the end statement. Now what this would do is that it will start off at 1. It will go into the for loop and it says that since i is 1 and x Right now, i is defined as 1, so x at the first element will be equal to 0. Then it would loop back to the top, where now i is 2. And then the second element of x will also be equal to 0. And then go back up, and now it becomes i becomes 3. So then it will be x3 equals to 0. Third element of x is 0, and goes back up. And it will repeat that cycle until the n index 10. If I run this code, you will see x as it's assigned the value 0 for each of its indices there. If you were to in assign a large number of values and you do not suppress the output, then your um, command window will be cluttered with the results. So it will be less messy if you put in a semicolon at the back of the command so that it will not display the results in the command window. So that's a simple for loop block. You can also have loops within loops or what they call a nested loop. So an example, a equals to a null matrix for i equals to 1 to m for j equals to 1 to n a i j equals to i plus j n m. So this is an example of a nested loop. We have one loop outside and another loop inside. Here I want to assign values into the matrix A and before I can assign values into it, I pre-allocate space for A and that is the reason for this first command. It is recommended to do so, so that it would speed up the computation time. Now let's look into the loop. So here it says that for i, index, the first index, uh, equals to 1, the starting index, until m. So m is the n index and since we did not specify the increment, then MATLAB would assume that the increment is 1. Then it will go inside the second loop where 4j is also equals to 1 until the n index of n. Then we start to define the values inside the matrix A. So remember the first i is equals to 1 and j equals to 1 for the first loop. So this a is 1, 1. It's equals to, since i is 1, j is 1, then this is 2. So the first 1, 1 element of matrix A would equal to the value 2. And then it would not go into the outer loop. The operations for the nested loop is still not complete. It would go back up. And now j instead of 1, it will become 2. 
And then here, remembering that i is still 1, so a is 1, 2, equals to i is 1, j, but now j is 2, so this is 3, and so a, 1, 2 is equals to 3. Then I'll go back up, and now j would be 3, and repeat the cycle until the end, where it would come out of this nested loop into the outer loop, where i was 1 just now, and it will change to 2 now. And once it's 2, go back inside here, and then it will run through from 1 to n again till it finishes, and go back out, and now it becomes 3 for the outer loop, and then go back in, and until the all of the iterations are complete. So here you might notice I did not define m and n yet. So let's say m is equals to 5, and n is equals to 5, and the, which means I specify that the n index is 5 for i, and the n index for j is 5. So let's see what would happen once I click run. What is the result of this computation? There. You would populate the matrix A with values of the summation of the index. Now let's take a look at the second type of loop in MATLAB, the while loop. Now the while loop executes a code block or statement, a group of commands repeatedly as long as the controlling expression is true, as long as the requirements are met. The basic form of a while loop is the statement while and then the controlling expression and the code block or the commands within the while block and the end statement to end the while block. Let's look at an example. So here is an example of a while loop. I define a equals to 6 and b equals to 15 and then the controlling expression. So while a is more than 0 and we use a logical operator and b is less than 16. So looking at this value, let's think this through. If a is equal to 6, so this would be true, but b is equal to 15, this would also be true. So true and true, which means that this statement is overall true. Then because it's true, it will enter this while block and it will meet the first nested conditional statement. If a is less than 0, is a less than 0, so a is 6, so this is not true. It would not execute this a equals to a plus 1, it would go into this else if b is more than 10. Is that true? Yes, it is true. So b would be equal to b minus 2, which means that b will be 13. And this n is for this if else if block. And it would continue down and loop back up to the top and check again the requirements. So is a more than 0? We did not do anything to a, so yes, it's still true. But b right now is b is 13 and it's still less than 16. So this would be true as well. So true, true, it will enter this while block and this will not um, execute because a is not less than 0. Else if is still true because b is more than 10, because now b is 13, so this would execute, so b 13 minus 2 becomes 11, so now b is 11. Then it will exit this if else if block and go back up to test the requirements again. So if you notice the trend, this would always be true, which means that this loop would go on forever. That is what it means by this statement here, which says that you need to be very careful to make sure that your while loop would actually reach a point of termination because if it does not terminate, it will be an infinite loop. In this case, if I were to run this, it would continue to be in the while loop and will not end. I will be forced to stop the execution using control C. So let's see what happens. If we know that this would continuously calculate, so it will not end. Well, what does that look like? So let me run this. You notice here that it's busy, which means that it is still calculating. It's not going to reach an end. And I would have to stop this somehow. If you find yourself to be an infinite loop and you like to um, exit the loop without actually force quitting MATLAB, then you can just press Control C. There. It's not an exactly graceful exit of a code and you would not like to have any infinite loops in your code because you would not be there to force exit the loop. You can break out of loops by using the break statement. Now, it is a fail-safe statement. If there will be a situation in your loops that would result in an infinite loop, if you add a break statement within that loop, then the code would always have a point where it would terminate. You would encounter more infinite loops when using the while loop compared to the for loop. 
because if you remember for the for loop you will need to specify when the loop should end because there will be an n index but for a while loop as long as the requirements are met it will continue to stay in the loop which makes it susceptible to infinite loops so a strategy for trying to reduce the chance of an infinite loop you can use the break statement so here just like before where we know that this particular situation will not lend itself to a loop termination, we add in the break statement with a count to at least be sure that even if there'll be, there is no end to the calculation, the calculation would stop at a threshold. So a strategy is for you to add in a count. So here I define a count to be equals to 1 and it is part of the loop and I said that once the count reaches a reasonable number, let's say 100, and I'm sure that the calculation cannot be more than 100, then I would say that for any count, for any loop that exceeds 100, would go into a break statement, would execute the break statement and exit the loop. So here, while a is more than 0, which is true, and b is less than 16, which is also true, then a equals to a plus 1, we increase, we make, we, which will make a will always be true for this statement, and b is equals to b plus 2, where 15 plus 2 will be 17, but this will be more than, will be less than 16, so this will be false, so I have to make some, should be more than that. I'm trying to replicate an infinite loop. b plus 2, would, uh, 15 plus 2 would be 17, so this one would definitely be more than 16, the condition and we are at 16 here will always be more than 15 because you keep on adding to it and here's the count so count right now is equals to 1 and 1 plus 1 will become 2 so for the first calculation the count from 1 will become 2 and we'll check if count is more than 100 is count more than 100 right now it's 2 so it's not so this would not execute and it will go back up which will also be true here and a will continue to be true b will be still true and count will be 3 and we'll keep on calculating until because this thing would always be correct for these calculations until the count is 100 once the count exceeds 100 then it will enter this if condition and execute the break and it will exit the while loop so let's see how the results look like so you see here after looping about 100 times, A has become 106 and B has become 216. It, it, this condition statement will always be true, but what stops it from being an infinite loop is the count, where if, since the count is more than 100, by the time it's 101, it's more than 100 and it would execute this break statement which results in the termination of the calculations. That is it for this video and I hope to see you in the next one.